Hello everyone, my name is Ekaterina Kochmer, and in this talk I will discuss the methods of automated generation of personalized pedagogical interventions in intelligent uterine systems. First of all, a couple of words about myself. I am an assistant professor at the University of Bath, and I conduct research at the intersection of artificial intelligence, natural language processing, and intelligent uterine systems. Prior to that, I have been working as a postdoctoral researcher at the Automated Language Teaching and Assessment Institute at the University of Cambridge, where I was focusing on the development of educational applications for second language learners. In particular, my research contributed to the building of Reading and Proof, which is a readability tool for non-native readers of English. I'm also a co-founder and the chief scientific officer of Corbett AI, where we are focusing on building an AI-powered, large-scale, open-domain, dialogue-based tutoring system, which is capable of providing learners with high-quality, interactive and personalized education in STEM subjects. Today, I will be talking about challenges in development of such an intelligent tutoring system. It has been shown that personalized tutoring helps students achieve their learning goals effectively. In traditional classrooms, such personalized tutoring is provided by human tutors, which means that feedback and teaching instructions can be adapted according to the needs of the students. However, even conventional classroom settings face challenges when individual needs of each student are considered, as teaching larger groups of students makes it impossible to address the needs and misunderstandings of each particular student. An alternative to this scenario is one-on-one -on -one tutoring, which, despite its advantages, is generally seen as too costly to be conducted on a large scale in most societies, uh, and it's also not readily available to everyone. In addition, in the current pandemic, uh, we have challenges not only for one-on-one -on -one tutoring, but also uh, regarding the availability of in-person tutoring in general. So intelligent tutoring systems, commonly defined as computer-based instructional systems with models of instructional content that specify what to teach and teaching strategies that specify how to teach, are a viable, viable and a low-cost alternative to human tutors, in particular since these systems attempt to mimic personalized human tutoring in a computer-based environment. In addition, ATS are capable of providing step-by-step -step guidance during problem-solving, and it has been shown that uh, such problem solving and active learning activities are highly effective in helping students learn in various domains. Therefore, there are a number of benefits to using ITS uh, in education. They're capable of providing step-by-step -step guidance to the students during problem solving. They can track students' skills and knowledge development. They can select problems on an individual basis. Those are all the aspects that make ITS not only a more powerful solution to uh, online and distance learning as compared to other computer-based learning environments, but also to some extent, they can favorably complement in-person teaching, providing a higher level of personalization to each individual student in particular. Finally, they can help us bridge the gap between various groups of learners including those groups of marginalized students and those who might not have an easy access to in-person tutoring uh, normally. At the same time, one of the major bottlenecks to a widespread use of ITS is the expensive and laborious process of creating content and pedagogical interventions for such platforms. For instance, the reliance of such systems on expert design, on handcrafted rules or rule-based approaches makes it hard to uh, generate a large number of uh, system interventions and thus limits the availability of such systems to generalize and scale, in particular if the goal of the system is to cover more than one domain of uh, learning. This calls for the application of machine learning and natural language processing techniques that can help generate automated feedback and interventions and thus help solve the scalability problem for an ITS. So in this talk, I will overview the approaches that we applied in Corbett to automatically generate data-driven feedback of various kinds. I will first discuss our approaches to feedback generation and personalization, and then I will present a set of experiments run with actual learners on our platform. The benefits of this process are that the feedback generated this way 
takes the individual needs of students into account and doesn't require expert intervention or handcrafted rules. Thus, it is easily scalable and transferable across domains. The results of our experiments show that such feedback leads to substantially improved student learning gains and improved subje subjective feedback evaluation in practice. All our experiments are run on the Corbett platform. Corbett is a large-scale open-domain dialogue-based ITS, which uses machine learning, NLP, and reinforcement learning to provide interactive, personalized learning online. We've launched this platform in 2019, uh, and now it has over 15,000 students enrolled. Currently, it is capable of teaching topics related to data science, machine learning, and artificial intelligence, but since this platform is highly modular, scalable, and is facilitated by the use of data-driven approaches, we plan to expand it uh, with more subjects in the future. Students enroll based on uh, courses or skills they would like to study, which provides them with the first step in personalizing their learning experience and their learning journey on the platform. So, for example, upon enrolling, a student may choose if they would like to focus on specific skills, like, say, classification analysis or regression analysis or application of neural networks. Uh, and they can also select among application domains, for instance, object detection in images or sentiment analysis in reviews and so on. Once a student has enrolled, Corbett tutors them by alternating between short lecture videos and interactive problem-solving exercises. During such problem-solving sessions, Corbett shows the student an exercise problem statement or a question. For example, a tutor may ask, what is a linear regression model? The student may then attempt to solve this exercise, ask for help, or even skip the exercise. If the student attempts to solve the exercise, their solution attempt is compared against their expectation, which we also call reference solutions, using a nature language processing model. If their solution is classified as incorrect, then the inner loop system will activate and respond with one of a dozen different pedagogical interventions. The available interventions on the platform include hints, explanations, elaborations, mathematical hints, concept tree diagrams, and multiple choice quiz answers. Each pedagogical intervention is chosen by an ensemble of machine learning models based on the student's learning profile and on their previous solution attempts, which helps ensure high level of personalization in tutoring on the platform. In this talk, I will focus specifically on our approaches to automated generation of hints and explanations, and I will discuss how they are adapted to each student. This highly scalable nature of pedagogical intervention generation ensures that Corbett can effectively address educational needs of a wide variety of students. So personalized hints and explanations are generated using NLP techniques and they are then adapted to each student according to a number of metrics related to the quality of the hint or explanation as well as the past interaction of the system with the student. The system generates a large set of hints and explanations by applying linguistic patterns to all expectations available in our database using a three-step algorithm. The first step in this algorithm is concerned with the identification of keywords and key phrases, which include nouns and found phrases within the question. In the examples presented on this slide, such keywords and phrases are marked with text boxes. For instance, overfitting, underfitting, logistic and linear regression, among others, are automatically identified by the system as keywords and key phrases. Next, we identify an appropriate sentence span for the hint generation. It would seem likely that the best hints should not include keywords, key phrases and related words, as they may reveal the solution to the student. So here we are interested in identifying the complementary bits of a sample reference answer to suggest to a student as a potential hint. For that, we apply state-of-the-art dependency parsing with spacing to eliminate parts of the expectation sentences that contain keywords and phrases. For instance, the first example on this slide consists of two clauses. A model is underfitting and when it has a high bias. 
But since the first clause contains a keyword undefeating, only the second clause is considered as a candidate for hint generation. In the second example, uh, among the two clause candidates for hint generation, namely, I would use logistic regression, and because the outputs are discrete, the first one is filtered out since it contains a key phrase logistic regression, and then the second one is used for the actual hint generation. In the final third step, uh, our algorithm is concerned with the generation of a grammatically correct hint. This is done automatically using discourse-based modifications such as think about the case when or think about the following and the partial hint extracted from an expectation in the previous step. For example, we combine the phrase think about the case with the identified sentence span when it has a high bias to generate the first hint in this example. By providing such a hint to the students, we thus give them a nudge in the correct direction, since they have to connect the idea of high bias to the concepts of underfitting and overfitting, and select the appropriate answer as a result. The hint provides them with partial information that can be used to give a correct answer to this question without actually revealing the full answer. Once hints are generated with the described algorithm, they need to be personalized or adapted to the needs of the students. Our system generates a number of hints uh, for each question, and in this personalization step, our goal is to select the most appropriate hints among the available ones. The appropriateness of this selection determines the quality of the personalized feedback provided to each student, and here we employ a machine learning approach and utilize specifically the random forest classifier from the scikit learn suite. The classifier is trained on the historical data from our platform, and the algorithm considers various sets of features that I'm going to overview next. These sets of features define the complexity of the feedback selection model, and in total we consider three models. The baseline model, which focuses on the quality of the hint itself. The shallow personalization model, which adds to that the past performance of the student. And the extended personalization model, that additionally takes into account past dialogue-based interactions between the students and the AI tutor. So as you can see, the three models get increasingly more complex in terms of the amount of personalization involved, from no personalization in the baseline model to a fully personalized framework in the extended personalization one. The baseline model is the first and the simplest among the three models, as it relies on the use of linguistic features, which assess the quality of the hint from the linguistic perspective only. These features do not take into account personal aspects of the student-system interaction, and they only assess feedback in isolation. This set contains a total of 14 features that are aimed at capturing various aspects of the generated feedback, including its quality, grammaticality, and appropriateness to the question. In particular, they take into account the length of the hint, the extent to which the hint and the question overlap in terms of the topics covered and the keywords contained in them, and we also estimate grammaticality of the generated hint using such proxy measures as, for example, language model perplexity score, parse tree completeness in the generated hint, and other measures. Within the shallow personalization model, we consider both the linguistic features pertaining to the generated hint described on the previous slides and the performance-based features extracted from the historical data on the students using our platform. Performance-based features take into account past students' performance and include the total number of questions presented by the ITS to the students, the number of all attempts as well as only the past attempts at answering the question, proportion of correctly and incorrectly answered questions in total, as well as the particular points uh, in the student system dialogue, and the total length of the student system dialogue interaction. With the addition of these eight performance-related features to the linguistic features described before, this model uses a total of 22 features. And finally, the extended personalization model, in addition to the 22 features that I described before, takes into account current students' utterance and up to four previous interaction terms between the students and the AI tutor. 
The number of interactions to take into account was selected to maximize overall coverage of interactions that were available on the platform at the time of the experiments. The model then analyzes these interactions from the linguistic point of view by taking the proportion of keywords, the proportion of topics overlapping between the question and each of the statements, and the perplexity score of each of the statements. As a result, this model relies on 49 features in total, and it combines the group of linguistic features pertaining to the hints only, the performance-based features described in the students, and the linguistic features applied to the past student system dialogue interactions. This makes it the most complex among the three models and the most personalized model considered uh, in this set of experiments. So before we uh, run user studies with these personalized models, the models were trained and evaluated on a collection of 450 previously recorded student system interactions using up to four turns in length where hints from the three feedback models were selected at uniform random and the efficacy of hints was measured. The models were trained and tested in a binary classification setting, where our goal is to predict if a student given a specific hint or explanation will correctly solve the exercise in the next attempt. In these experiments, we used 50-fold cross-validation technique, and here we report the results in terms of accuracy and F1 score. All three models outperformed the random selection of the hint, and increased personalization brings stepwise improvements in the results. As you can see, the best performing model overall uses extended personalization and achieves statistical significant improvements at a 95% confidence level over all other models. Therefore, we should expect this model to select the most appropriate personalized feedback in practice. And this motivated the next set of experiments with the learners on our platform, where the feedback selection models were integrated into the tutoring system and tested with the actual learners on the platform. These experiments involve 796 annotated student tutor interactions collected from 183 students, enrolled for free, and studying the machine learning course on the Corbett Learning Platform over the period of two months in 2020. Students from around the world can sign up on the platform and they need only to provide their email addresses. So to estimate the aggregate demographics of all the visitors on the Corbett Learning Platform website, we use the Google Analytics tool. Based on our analysis, we estimate that around 51% of students come from Asia, around 22% come from North America, Central America or South America, around 13% of students come from Africa, 12.5% uh, from Europe, and the rest come from Oceania, with the majority of our students being between 18 and 35 years old. We believe, therefore, that this estimate also holds for the rest, for the set of the students who have participated in the experiments that we report on here. To evaluate the personalized hints, a hint is selected at uniform random from one of the personalized feedback selection models when a student gives an incorrect solution. Afterwards, the student learning outcomes are measured as the proportion of instances where a student provides a correct solution after receiving a personalized hint. Since it is possible for the AI tutor to provide several pedagogical interventions for a given exercise, we separate the learning gains observed in students for all attempts from those for students who received a personalized hint specifically before their second attempt at the exercise. Thus, accounting for the effects other interventions might have on student success at the exercise. For the purposes of accurately measuring student learning outcomes, all student solutions were manually annotated by domain experts as either being correct or incorrect. In line with the previous results, here we observe that the extended personalization model leads to the highest student uh, learning outcomes, followed by the shallow personalization model and the baseline model for all attempts. Moreover, we observe that the difference between the learning gains of the extended personalization model and baseline model for the students before their second attempt is statistically significant at a 95 confidence level. This result strongly support the hypothesis that we made that automatically generated personalized hints lead to substantial improvements in student learning gains. 
In addition to the hints automatically generated using our own reference solutions available on the platform, we also leverage the data available on Wikipedia and further build a pipeline capable of generating other explanation and definitions based on the Wikipedia articles. In particular, we observe that with over 6 million articles containing over 3.5 billion words, English Wikipedia provides extensive material for the NLP components of our system. With such rich and extensive amounts of useful data, we assume that our students may benefit further from additional examples, explanations and definitions extracted from Wikipedia. To this end, we built a multi-step Wikipedia-based explanation generation pipeline, which involves the following major stages. First, as before, we identify keywords and phrases in the questions and expectations available on our platform. Then, we automatically identify the set of relevant Wikipedia articles that are related to the keywords and phrases, and we extract definitions and explanations from the first paragraph of each article. Due to the typical Wikipedia article structure, it is safe to assume that these explanations and definitions are of high relevance, and since they are not automatically generated in the first place, it is also safe to assume that they are well-formed and grammatically correct. Therefore, we mark them as high-quality instances. Further candidate explanations are then generated from the other parts of the article, and we apply coreference resolution where necessary to make sure our generated explanations are also well-formed and grammatically correct. However, some of these generated examples will necessarily be of low quality, either being ill-formed or irrelevant. Therefore, we train a binary classifier whose aim is to distinguish between high and low quality explanations, and the identified high quality explanations are further used on our platform. To give you an idea of the extracted and generated explanations, here is an example. The first sentence presents an explanation related to the question on autonomous cars and is extracted from the Wikipedia article on self-driving car. The second sentence is an explanation generated by our pipeline on the basis of the text available in the Wikipedia article on autonomous cargo ship. The bits of the explanation that are most relevant and should help the students answer the question are highlighted in italics. For instance, the information that a self-driving car uses little or no human input and that an autonomous ship decides the course of action itself may nudge the students in the right direction and help them answer how many human drivers needed to drive an autonomous vehicle. Our system, trained to detect high-quality relevant explanation, explanations shows high accuracy and overall good performance in a 50-fold cross-validation experiment. So to evaluate the Wikipedia-based explanations, we conduct a second experiment with our users. When the student gives an incorrect solution, the system shows two randomly selected Wikipedia-based explanations, one extracted and one generated, and asks the student to select the most helpful one, or to select if both are equally helpful, or if neither of them is helpful. The system then asks the student to attempt the exercise again, based on which the student's learning gain is measured. It should be noted that since the student receives two hints at once, the observed learning gains are influenced by both hints shown. The results suggest that students find their original extracted explanations more helpful on average, which was expected as most of such explanations would be relevant and well-formed. However, we also note that when both types of explanations are shown, at least one of them is rated as helpful over 83% of the time with this difference in results being uh, between both types and each individual type being significant at a 95 confidence level. This proves that although generated explanations are slightly less helpful on average, students are far more likely to rate the feedback as helpful when both types of explanations are shown to them as compared to only showing extracted ones. Finally, the student learning gains appear to be highly similar for both extracted and generated explanations with no statistically significant difference between the two types. We therefore conclude that generated Wikipedia-based explanations can indeed provide helpful feedback. To conclude, as I mentioned earlier in the talk, Corbett platform contains a dozen of different pedagogical interventions, which apart from hints and Wikipedia-based explanations contain elaborations, mathematical hints, concept tree diagrams, and multiple choice quizzes, 
as well as programming exercises. This means that our automated feedback generation model should be able to deal with multiple input modalities, including not only textual content, but mathematical expressions, bits of programming code, and similar. The ongoing research uh, conducted by our team addresses various aspects, including generation of feedback on mathematical equations, programming exercises, in-depth analysis of dialogue and discourse, to give you just some examples of the work done. To illustrate the challenges faced when analyzing mathematical expressions, consider the ambiguity of a mathematical expression with two plausible interpretations visualized on this slide. Finally, for more details on the methods presented in this talk, I'd like to refer you to our recent publications where we show that automated personalized feedback improves learning gains in an intelligent uterine system, presents our large-scale open domain mixed interface dialogue-based ITS for STEM subjects, and talk about deep discourse analysis for generating personalized feedback in intelligent uterine systems. This research is conducted in collaboration with my colleagues at Corbett as well as McGill University and Miller, Quebec Artificial Intelligence Institute and École de Technologie Supérieure. I would like to thank you all for your attention and I will be happy to address your questions during the Q&A session.